Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Just went to check on the boas in the morning and another litter is on the ground. And I'm really excited about this one. This is a crawl key dwarf boa litter. And this is actually, I believe this is my first litter of dwarf boas this year. I don't have as many dwarf boa pairings this year as I had last year. So I'm really excited to finally have some on the ground. I know how much these, uh, how popular these dwarf boas are and how much they're in demand. So it's great to have some babies on the ground. So without further ado, let's go take a quick look at these baby dwarf Qualki boas that were just born. Just down in the snake room in the morning, checking the animals out, cleaning, doing some cleaning, and looks like this Qualki female has had her baby. So looks like a really nice litter. I noticed she was kind of moving around last night and her due date had passed a few days ago so I was expecting that she might have them in the night and um, just came on checked on her and there they are and uh, she's being pretty calm usually or sometimes the mothers will be kind of defensive with the babies and sometimes they're really checking them out but she looks like she's just kind of done with them to be honest she just kind of wants to move on and do her thing um, so I'm going to get her out and clean her up, give her a good soak, clean up the enclosure, and we'll check out the babies. But it looks like a really nice litter. This is a first time female. She was born in 2017 here at Brian Boas, so a second generation breeding. And uh, looks like a decent sized litter. I was expecting maybe as small as, you know, four or five babies for a first time dwarf boa litter. But this looks like quite a few more and I don't see any slugs i think i see one stillborn there unfortunately but looks like a really nice litter so what i'm going to do is uh get her out clean her up and we'll check out the babies first i got to get a few close-up shots just to document the litter as is before i even touch them and there's the female i don't know it looks like she's kind of checking them out now Sometimes I feel bad taking the babies away from them after all the hard work they put in to make this happen, but uh, she'll get a nice rat and I'm sure she'll like that, so I think she'll be okay. And her babies, of course, will be in very good hands. The mother bow is out and she's soaking in some lukewarm water getting cleaned up and I got the babies out but first I just wanted to show you this uh, unfortunate stillborn and it's not all that unusual to have stillborns you know one or two or sometimes even an entire litter that unfortunately don't make it and sometimes they're kind of malformed or they're not completely formed sometimes they're pretty much normal formed so um, like this one doesn't look like there's anything visibly wrong with it. So I often wonder if something just happened due to bad luck, like at the last few days of development or, you know, the position of the snake inside the mother when it was born, something happened, or maybe it was just not alive all along. I mean, it's kind of hard to tell, but uh, with this litter, we just have this one still born and I didn't see any slugs which are unfertilized eggs, which is always a good sign. So that's the baby that didn't make it, so he'll get a burial in my garden and uh, go on to fertilize my tomato plants. And there are the babies that made it. There's seven little guys and they all look really nice. I'm guessing these guys were born quite some few hours ago. They were, they're obviously not just newborns because, well they are newborns, but they weren't born in the, like the last hour or two. I'm guessing they were born sometime late last night, you know, maybe around midnight or 1 a.m. It's now around uh, 10 in the morning. And uh, cause you don't see any amniotic sac and I see some umbilical cords. You can see the red <coughs> residue there, <coughs> excuse me, and a little bit of yolk, but uh, overall, you don't see much after birth, which, let, which tells me that these guys haven't been born in the last hour or two. There's a close up of the babies. You can see they have that nice gray color that you see in the qual key boas, and you can see the saddles are somewhat irregular. 
most of these guys have looks like they have pretty well formed saddles sometimes you see a lot of striping in the qual keys these guys I don't see too much striping although some of them have a little bit of an aberrant pattern which is kind of neat and so these guys were born from a female that was born here as I mentioned in 2017 her parents uh, came from Rio Bravo reptiles bred by Gus Renfro the father of the litter was bred by my friend Michael Beach and the parents of that boa also came from Rio Bravo reptiles as pretty sure pretty much all of the crawl key in the United States or a lot of them as far as hobbyists have came from Rio Bravo. I know uh, Dr. Scott Boback has quite a few of these uh, Belize Island boas that he's working with in his lab so he probably has some unrelated ones but you know really they're all kind of related because they're from this small island and probably already highly inbred in the wild because of the small population size. I feel a little bit better about the inbreeding situation with these island boas because they're likely to already be highly inbred in the wild and so if there were any deleterious genes that would cause their downfall or demise they've probably already been weeded out of the population. And so nice litter seven babies is a you know pretty decent sized litter for a first time dwarf boa mother the mother or the grandmother of this litter is um she's about five five and a half feet she's one of my largest crawl keys the mother of this litter is only about four feet i'll have to show her to you in a sec after she uh gets cleaned up but these guys are just nice litter and uh i'll keep them in this sterilite tub for about 10 days or so until they shed and then they'll go into their own separate tubs and they'll uh, get their first meal but right now I'm just going to put them onto a uh, heat mat set to maintain about 90 degrees I'll clean it up the paper towels in a few hours get rid of that gunk they tend to have this really funky smell that uh, goes south real fast so I want to keep them nice and clean um, but they should be good to go in this sterilite tub this is a um, 56 quart sterilite tub for about 10 days or so now that we've seen the babies i thought i'd give you a quick look at the mother and this is a 2017 qual key boa born here and i held back this female because she had more pink color she's got this nice kind of grayish lilac color with lots of pink and purple highlights to her just a really nice looking boa and I thought I'd show her to you because she's actually she's lost some weight of course because she just had a litter but she's really not all that she didn't lose all that much weight and I do feed my female boas when they're gravid provided that they eat and about 90% of them will eat when they're gravid so I feed them about once a month or so I stop feeding them about a month before their due date so I fed this girl up through like the end of May I knew she was due sometime in early to mid July and uh, so it's really puts them in a better shape because boas can put an awful lot into their litter and you know some boas will not feed during when they're gravid which is a very long time for them to go without food and they have to put all this energy into making the babies if they eat while they're gravid it helps them be in better shape when the babies are born so of course I'll give her a year off next year uh, she's not going to breed again next year possibly the following year depending on how things go but uh, glad that she's not bone thin I mean she's kind of thin but not nearly as thin as some boas I've seen after giving birth the other point I wanted to make is she's only about maybe four and a half feet long or so you can see this is a pretty small boa um, she might get a little bit bigger her mother is actually about five and a half feet her mother is a uh, older she's one of the oldest boas in my collection her mother is about 20 years old now and her mother I got as an adult she had already had a couple litters and she was around five and a half feet when I got her so she basically stayed the same but um, her mother actually had a litter last year she's still going and uh, this is the next generation the F1's born here. Actually, the next generation are the babies that were just born. So those are, I think this is my first F2 litter of Qual Key here at Brian Boa. So really exciting uh, to think about. So 
So that was the mother. I thought it'd end just by showing you the father of the litter. This guy is a 2013 born Kualki Boa bred by my friend uh, Michael Beach. And this male is a really nice looking animal. He's got this nice steely blue gray color. It's got uh, quite a bit of like striping and aberrancies. You can see well, his last third towards his tail is mostly striped. And he's got a lot of speckling and kind of a really cool look. He's got some really cool markings on his head as well. Um, this guy, I'd say he's about the same size, maybe a little bigger than that female. I'd say maybe close to five feet or so. But this guy isn't going to get any bigger. He's a 10 year old animal. And this guy I particularly enjoy taking out and handling because he's super chill. He likes to hold on, not too tight, but he doesn't try to escape or go berserk or anything like that. You can see this guy, he's uh, a little bit more weight on him than the female because she just gave birth. But really, he, the female's not too much thinner than this guy who's been on a pretty much normal feeding schedule. The Qualki tend to be a little bit slimmer than some of the other boas. So I just uh, want to mention that because, again, the female is still in pretty good shape even after giving birth uh, because I fed her when she was gravid. Some people claim that if you feed when gravid, they're more likely to deliver early. So to avoid that, I don't feed my animals within a month of their due date. And um, you know, I've never had any issues with females giving birth early or premature because of being fed like that. And in fact, sometimes I've made a mistake and I've got the due date wrong and I actually ended up feeding them like a week or so before the babies were born and the babies were born fine. So I haven't had any experience where feeding the animals when they're gravid has any negative effects on the babies. And I think it really does put more flesh on them and gets them in better shape when they're ready to give birth. There are some females that just won't eat when they're gravid, you know, despite me trying. And when they're born, often they look really, really emaciated. So that really worries me. And I've been able to get them back up to shape in a few months by feeding them on a pretty regressive feeding regimen. But I always prefer that my females aren't gonna be like on the edge of death after giving birth, which is why I feed them during the, while well, they're gravid. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Oh, the last thing I wanted to mention before I forget, um, some or all of these babies will be available in probably about two months or so after they're feeding and established and I'll have them up on my Flickr page. As always, stay tuned to this channel for updates on the litter and when my other babies born in 2023 are going to be ready to go to their new homes. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to shoot me a line. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.